the Lord covers the major Christian events in America and across the world from the heart of Europe. To the tip of Africa. From the centers of Asia. and South America. You're a part of the world's largest prayer and praise gathering. Joining us from the Polk Theater in Nashville, Tennessee are founder and pastor of Faith is the Victory Church, Pastor Charles Cowan, pastor of the Lord's Chapel, Pastor Bobby Howard, gifted contemporary Christian singer, Dee Dee Chantwell, Christian country singers and songwriters, The Days, studio musician and recording artist, Terry McMillan, well-known gospel singer and songwriter, Donnie Rambo, lead singer for Shenandoah, Marty Rabin, Christian country singer, Betty Jean Robinson, and read to take your calls, her partners from around America. of the Trinity Broadcasting Network, Paul and Jane Cruz. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, everybody. Coast to coast, shore to shore, border to border, and around the world. It is time to... From Nashville, Tennessee, at the James K. Polk Theater, downtown Nashville for this great live praise the Lord is coming to you. Well, come on, let's give the Lord a mighty praise offering. What do you say? We are in the South once again, and God's people are on fire, excited, happy, praising the Lord, and especially delighted that Channel 50, our sunlight station, is on the air in Nashville, Tennessee. And the other good news, in case you didn't hear it last night, is it will be carried around the 1st of October by the great Viacom cable system here in Nashville, which will give us a full coverage station. Will you promise me you'll call Viacom and thank them because they will be adding Channel 50, the sunlight station, to their great cable station. We'll give Viacom a hand, will you? And yes, as I said, promise me you will call them and thank them most heartily. Uh, the good news that I just got today from Bob Higley is, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Just since the must-carry bill was passed last November, just before Mr. Bush left office, we have added over six and one-half million new households to your Trinity Broadcasting Network just through cable. We are now moving on up toward 25 million households just through cable. And since there are about 3.4 persons per household, that means about 80 million people just by cable. Besides all the through-the-air broadcasting stations, three, almost 360 of them. The FCC just granted us 22 more the other day. We got 23 more under construction. Dear Lord, we are going through the devil's territory. Satellite up, satellite down, satellite over, long wave, short wave, radio stations, TV stations, backyard satellite dishes. There won't be any place for the old boy to hide before long. We'll get him. Wherever he is with the word of God, the light of the gospel, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness. And then Jesus said, I'll come. The end will come. I say again, I believe with all my heart that we are that final generation that will welcome back Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. I believe that I am going to cheat the undertaker. 
And many of you in this room are going to do the same. A few may go on home to be with the Lord, but I believe by and large the generation that's alive upon planet Earth today will be the welcoming committee for our Jesus Christ of Nazareth when he sets foot on that Mount of Olives and it splits in two and a great artesian well of water springs up so that it actually says the Dead Sea will live again. And then Jesus Christ will sit upon the throne of David in the capital city of Jerusalem, Israel, on top of Mount Moriah, and he will indeed be king over all the earth. <laughs> Dear Lord, I don't know how I got started on that, but I, I just felt it tonight. Glory be to God. Have we got a little scripture verse that we are going to share before our pastors come? I stood over there, and I was just going to read some words of Jesus tonight. I just felt I should. And all of a sudden, my spirit just bursts. It just read in the Revelation. I had no idea what you were going to talk about tonight. But this is what the Lord wanted us. He wants us to think about and talk about heaven right now in a very special way. And I don't know exactly why, but we'll just follow him. Reading from Revelation 21. Then I saw a new earth and a new sky. For the present earth and the sky had disappeared. And I, John, saw that holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. And it was a glorious sight, yes. as beautiful as a bride at her wedding. And I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, the home of God is now among men and he will live with them and they will be his people yes god himself will be among them and he will wipe away all the tears yes. from their eyes and there will be no more death nor sorrow nor crying nor pain <laughs> for all that is gone forever and the one sitting on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. And then he said to me, Write this down. For I will tell you, and it is truth, trustworthy and true. It is finished. I am the A and the Z, the beginning and the end. I will give the thirsty the springs of water of life as a gift. Everyone who conquers will inherit all these blessings. And I will be his God and he will be my son. But cowards who turn back from following me and those who are unfaithful to me and the corrupt, and the murderers, and the immoral, and those conversing with demons, the idol worshipers, and all liars. Their doom is in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur. But then the seven angels who had emptied the flask containing seven last plagues came and said to me, come with me, and I want to show you the bride the lamb's wife and in a vision he took me to a towering mountain peak and from there I watched that wondrous city the holy Jerusalem sin descending out of the skies from God and it was filled with the glory of God and flashed and glowed like a precious gem crystal clear like Jasper its walls were broad and high and with 12 gates guarded by 12 angels. And the names of the 12 tribes of Israel were written on the gates. And the angel held in his hand a golden measuring stick and measured the city. And its light will light the nations of the earth. Yes. And the rulers of the whole world will come and bring yeah. their glory to it and its gates never close they will stay open all day long and there is no night and the glory 
and the honor of all the nations shall be brought to it and nothing evil will be permitted in it but only those whose names are written in say it with me the lamb's book of life Woo! And here is the most important question that could be asked on this earth. Do you want to live in that city? Do you want a mansion somewhere in that great city, Foursquare? Did you know the Lord Jesus has been building that mansion for nearly 2,000 years now? Did you know you've got a street address in heaven? Yeah. It's sitting up there waiting for you. I'm about to get happy here. Folks. I'm just about to get happy. Dear Lord, have mercy. My mansion is waiting for me in heaven. If Jesus hasn't got it done in 2,000 years, it's nearly done. It's nearly done. I sent an order up a long time ago for a French provincial. Yes and uh, some antique furniture and some gold ornaments and you know gold is kind of common in heaven they pave the streets with it up there no we smile we laugh but we have a right to because it's real that home is real and jesus said if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and i will receive you unto myself that where i am there ye may be also oh you don't have to be a theology professor to understand that do you i'm going to prepare a home for you and if i go i'll be back to get you so that you can live with me where i live jesus said what person in their right mind wouldn't want to live in that city who wrote that old song betty jean just build my mansion next door to jesus and tell the angels i'm a coming home is that dotty i should have known i should have known maybe we can coax her out to sing it tonight and some of her other great songs she'll be along a little bit later but I don't know, somehow in my spirit, I feel that there's somebody maybe that's just tuned across at the very beginning of this program tonight. And you've heard maybe a grandmother or somebody that you loved very much tell you about that city. And you've heard a prayer go up for you. And you've known of someone in your family that loved you very much and has called your name to our Heavenly Father and asked God to send the Holy Spirit and draw you to the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ these things are true and they are real I want to tell you Jesus gave us a list of things to look for in Matthew chapter 24 and I want to tell you we're seeing them come to pass he also said through his great apostle Paul that in the latter days just before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ that it was going to get so wicked it would be just like in the days of Lot and also in the days of Noah where in Noah's day there was only eight righteous people left upon the earth he warned us that these awesome immutable things would come to pass when have we ever seen such insanity with people walking into schoolhouses and shooting young people dead in classrooms walking into lawyers offices and through a dispute of some kind shooting eight people dead walking into restaurants walking into post offices and pulling out a gun and literally shooting people dead when have we ever seen anything like this? The insanity that has erupted in our own blessed America defies description and imagination. But Jesus warned us and he said, these things must come to pass before the end of all things. He said, watch therefore, watch. And when these things begin to come to pass, oh, we're a crazy bunch, are we? We, the world is Fearful men's hearts, that's one of the signs, by the way, failing them for fear. 
But he said, when you see these things begin to come to pass, run, hide in a cave, get some freeze-dried food, expect to go through the tribulation. When you see these things begin to come to pass, lift up your heads and rejoice. For your redemption draweth nigh is even at the doors. I'm not going through any tribulation, brother. If you want to stay and go through it, be my guest. I'm going with the first busload out of this place, boy. I got a mansion just over the hilltop. Iris Stanfield wrote about it, and I'm going to see it one of these days. Glory be to God. How about you? Are you ready to go? If you're not, let's pray. Did you know there's a very interesting little scripture that says something like this? Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. But whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. Whew, that's a tough one. Do I have power to forgive sin? No. Neither do you. But do you know what that Holy Scripture means? Now, if you'll get a hold of this, and if you'll work with me tonight, we will see a mighty influx of souls, even in the beginning of this Praise the Lord program tonight. How many are here tonight because a mom or a dad or a grandma or somebody prayed you through until the Holy Spirit found your hiding place and brought... Keep your hand up. Wave it at me. Somebody got on their knees and called your name to God. And the Holy Spirit came and convicted you and brought you to the bleeding cross of Jesus Christ. That may have been a grandmother, a mom, a dad, a grandpa, someone you love. Did you know that person, in a very real sense, is responsible for your sins being remitted by Jesus Christ? Because they prayed the conviction of the Holy Spirit upon you until you were willing to come and accept Christ as Savior. Did you know we have that power in our hands tonight to pray the conviction, the mighty conviction of the Holy Spirit upon men and women, boys and girls, millions and multitudes watching by television across this nation and around this world. And if we'll put ourselves in agreement and get in one accord and ask the Holy Spirit to do that precious work that only He can do, causing men and women to realize that they're lost making them to know that they must have a Savior, then we will be used of God to see sins remitted by the power of Jesus' blood and the power of the Holy Spirit. Will you join me in prayer, all of my wonderful guests here and pastors? Come and stand beside me right now as we pray, and I'm going to have them lead us in our prayer in just a minute. Pastor Charles Cowan is here tonight. He is the founder and pastor of Faith is the Victory Church right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Let's say welcome tonight to Pastor Charles Cowan. And Pastor Bobby Howard is here. He is the pastor of the Lord's Chapel right here in Nashville, Tennessee. And we'll give them all a proper introduction in just a little bit. Let's ask, let's have a great welcome tonight for these wonderful, wonderful pastors. And I'm going to have them lead us in a moment to the throne of grace, but I feel so strong in my spirit right now that we should agree, pastors, body of Christ, wonderful singers, musicians, and guests, and will you agree with me right now and do some spiritual battle with me in Jesus' name. Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we ask that a mighty conviction of your spirit Seize every lost heart and soul under the sound of our voice in this room and by the miracle of the ether waves around the world. Lord God, there may be a soul listening in Japan tonight that's hearing these words. Spirit of the living God, take hold of them, we pray. We send our love through the wings of prayer and we ask that you bring them to full knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Spirit of the living God, touch each lost soul, we pray tonight. Do that precious work that only you can do. Make men and women know 
that they need a Savior. And now will you follow me in a simple little prayer and you across this nation. You thought you just happened to tune by this channel. No, no. The Holy Spirit had a divine appointment for you tonight. And He is after your soul. He wants you to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you will pray this simple little prayer with me and we will all pray it together to help you pray it. And some of you in this room need to pray it. And if you're not sure of your eternal salvation, slip your hand up right now and pray this prayer with me right now. Will you do it? Yes, I see a few hands going up even in this room tonight. God bless you, young man. I admire your honesty and your integrity tonight. I see that little child's hand. God bless you, honey. Everybody pray this simple prayer with me out loud. Say, oh God, oh God. I'm lost. I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I do believe Jesus Christ is that Savior. I believe His precious blood is cleansing me now from every sin. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Be my Savior now and forever. Amen. If you prayed that little prayer and meant it, I think we ought to welcome another whole load into the family of God tonight. And do the next thing the Word of God tells you to do. If you prayed that prayer in this room tonight, just turn to somebody and just say, I'm saved. Just say it. It'll do all of some of you old saints that have been in the way 30 years. It'll do you good to say it out loud to somebody. I'm saved. At home, turn to somebody and just tell mom or dad or the kids, tell them I'm saved. Children, tell your parents right now, I'm saved. I've received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And then do the next thing we love to have you do, and that is telephone one of the numbers on your screen and tell a beautiful prayer partner, I have received Jesus as my Savior. We'll send you a Bible if you need one and we'll ask for it and some other things that will bless you and help you as you start your new walk with Jesus Christ. Well, pastors, forgive me, but this doesn't happen very often, but I have a feeling, Pastor Cowan, that the Holy Spirit was kind of on somebody's trail tonight. How about you? Praise God. I, I believe it, Brother Paul, and we certainly welcome you and Jan and TBN and the Praise the Lord program to Nashville tonight, but we're, we're excited about what just happened. For we know that the Spirit of God has moved and brought people into the kingdom of God. Amen. You know, I was thinking uh, as uh, I was reading today in Genesis, when, uh, when God called Abraham, or Abram as it was, He called him out of the land of Ur, and He told him to get out of the land and to get away from his kindred. And He made a statement to him, and He said, I will make of thee a great nation. Did you know that every time that God speaks that He has increase on His mind? He said, I will make of thee a great nation. Now, he's talking to one man. One man doesn't make a great nation. It takes a lot of people to make a great nation. But God looked at Abraham and said, or Abram and said, I'm going to make of thee a great nation. I'm going to bless thee. I'm going to make your name great. And then he said, I'm going to make you to be a blessing. God is the God of increase. When God created the world and said, let there be light, there was increase that was set into motion when God spoke those words. And light tonight is still traveling out yonder somewhere, wherever it's at. It's still on the increase tonight. And everywhere that God is, there is increase where He is at. If He's in your life tonight, there is increase because God is the God of increase. God never decreases. He always increases. That's why souls and people have been born into the kingdom of God tonight, as Brother Paul led us in that prayer. And you know, when Jesus came to the earth, the Bible says that God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power, and he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He was causing increase to happen in the lives of people. Everything that he did, he caused increase to happen. He caused increase down at Jairus' house when he raised his daughter from the dead. He caused increase when that little woman crawled up in the crowd that day and reached and touched the hem of his garment. And when she's made whole in that selfsame hour, God increased her life. 
I'll tell you, God is the God of increase, and he wants to increase your life tonight. And you know, Satan is, is dumb in some ways. He's smart, subtle, sly in other ways, but in some ways, you know, Satan is dumb. Did you know that, 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 that in Genesis, the third chapter, that God spoke and said that, that, that the seed was coming and that Satan was going to bruise his heel, but that seed was going to bruise his head. And Satan, from that very moment, uh, he went looking for who that seed was, and he couldn't find it. Uh, uh, Cain slew Abel, and all down through the Bible, it gives us record uh, of where Satan is looking for that seed, and he couldn't find him. Uh, and don't you know, he had to be slapped upside the head uh, with a word out of heaven uh, when John baptized Jesus in the Jordan River, uh, and a voice came from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him for the first time Satan knew who the seed was and the battle was on and he went out into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil and there he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights uh, and you know what there he defeated Satan by saying it is written it is written it is written and every time he spoke there was increase that happened uh, every time a word came out of his mouth and listen it said, had the princes of this world known, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. Satan did not know that when he put Jesus in that tomb, took him to Calvary, to Golgotha, and took his life and put him in that tomb, he did not know that he was going to cause increase in the earth. Uh, there was going to be increase in the kingdom of God. Uh, there was not only going to be one Jesus that he had to deal with, uh, but there were going to be literally millions of born-again people all over the world uh, that are created in the life uh, and in the nature of God, uh, filled with the power of God, uh, and they are going across the land tonight, and there is increase in the world tonight. The world is getting dark. Yes, it's getting dark out there, but the Scripture says, Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Uh, I'll tell you, saints, if there was ever an hour that you and I have to be joyful and to rejoice, it's tonight uh, because God is increasing his kingdom. Uh, he's increasing the family, uh, and there is more victory for a child of God uh, than there has ever been before. Can you say Amen to that tonight. I'm glad I'm a part of the family of God. How about you? I'm glad I'm in the kingdom of God. Can you say amen on that tonight? And it's a joy to be here, and it's a joy to be a part of, of what God's doing right here with TBN and to watch the increase that happens every night, that that signal goes up and comes down. There is increase that's taking place amen. in the earth, in the body of Christ. Amen. God bless you. It's a joy to be here. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Cowan. Boy, you got two sermons tonight already. And maybe a third here a little bit later. I'll tell you what let's do. Let's have Pastor Howard lead us in our prayer as we invite the precious Holy Spirit now to just take charge of every part of this program tonight. Our singing, may it be under a mighty anointing of the Holy Spirit. And may there be even more precious souls coming in all through these next couple of hours. Praise God. Pastor, I'll have you come back after a while and give a little word, but just lead us in our prayer. Let's invite the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Would you join hands, unite yourself together. Something happens when righteous people get on their knees before a holy Amen. God. Amen. Father, we just come right now in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, a name above all names. Lord, we just come tonight asking that your Holy Spirit would continue to move in this theater. Lord, there's been lots of things that have happened inside Polk Theater. There have been lots of music. There's been lots of plays. But Father, I pray that what happens here tonight, what takes place here tonight will go down in posterity. I pray that history, Lord, will record the events that are gonna transpire as ministers are born, as people come into the family, missionaries are commissioned out of this broadcast, out of this time tonight, Lord. I pray that you would anoint everyone that ministers on this program. I pray that you would bless the singers. May the Shekinah glory of God Almighty fall upon this place, O oh Lord. Minister in a strong way. And Lord, for those remaining minutes that 
we have. Let it go through the airwaves and permeate the hearts of every man, woman, boy, or girl that hears this program tonight. Saturate the world with your spirit and with your power through Praise the Lord and TBN tonight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Bobby Howard from the Lord's Chapel right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Well, singers, musicians, get set. We're going to meet some new friends tonight. Some of our old timers here are uh, going to bless us this evening. But from here on, you better fasten your spiritual seatbelt, folks, because we are going to sing and make melody unto the Lord. Terry McMillan, that crazy harmonica player, is here tonight. Come on, let's get going with I've Got a Feeling. Everything is going to be all right.
it gonna be all right? Oh, yeah. Turn me up a little bit in the monitors, please. Let's get down now. I said, people, my people get ready. Cause there's a train to come. You don't need no chicken paw. You know, you just get on board. Cause all you need is faith. of Jesus you don't need no ticket uh -uh. you just get on board all aboard I don't think the old James K. Polk Theater will ever be the same again. I think we have plum ruined this place for ever doing any ungodly stuff in here again. Glory. We've put a blessing on this place and an anointing that I pray will never leave and Glory. that everyone who comes in this room will feel the mighty conviction of the power of the Spirit of God. How many of y'all will pray for Terry, Jan, and me, and a whole group of us as we get on a big old 747 next Tuesday and go to Russia? This will be my, 
Well, third ministry trip, I, I, I lost count of all those business trips to get Channel 40 is on the air, dear friends. We're going to dedicate the first Christian TV station in the land of Russia, in St. Petersburg, Russia. Oh, Lord, what a joy that will be. I'll bring you back a good report. We'll show it to you on Trinity Broadcasting, of course, many, many times. And, but we need your prayers. Things are tightening up over in Russia. In fact, the Congress tried to pass a law the other day that would stop any further Christian groups coming into Russia to preach the gospel. There are very powerful forces that don't like what is happening. But we kind of come up on their blind side. We don't come in as, you know, the healing evangelists. We kind of come in sneaky. We come in with a crazy harmonica player <laughs> playing this train. Hallelujah. And all kinds of interesting power team that breaks handcuffs and ball bats and a Jeff Finholt that sings with long hair. We, we kind of got the devil confused over there in Russia, I'll tell you. Yeah, tell them that little story. Oh, did you, I don't know if any of you saw the, um, the Country Music Awards where Trinity won an award the other night. By the way, right here in this theater it was. But I have to tell you a little story that happened that night. It impressed me so I called Paul and told him in Texas all about it. Dwayne Allen from the Oak Ridge Boys had been uh, just, he was here that night, by the way, and uh, told a little precious story about Russia. And this is why you can go in as a harmonica player, an ex-Black Sabbath, and yet the little precious ones over there are getting the message. And I want to hear this, you to hear this. Dwayne said that he and the Oak Ridge Boys, when they had just crossed from all gospel going into entertainment some, they had gotten Elvira and a few of the songs had gotten popular, they were invited to come to Russia and sing. So they went as a group and sang. Well, that was when it was Red Communist Russia. Of course, they went in just as strictly entertainment. Every song that they sang, every word had to be known, and they had to know exactly what they were saying and singing to the people. So they sang Elvira, and they looked up Elvira, you know. <laughs> no trouble with Elvira, so they got to sing that. And so they ran out of songs, and they realized there was a crowd there, and they needed more songs. So Dwayne said he thought a minute, and he thought, oh, he said, we can do uh, Beulah Land. And so he told the red guard, the communist guard that was looking at the censor, said, it's, it's Beulah Land. So he looked in his book, Beulah, <laughs> Beulah Land. Uh, no such thing. No Beulah Land in communist Russia. And he said, you can't sing it. He said, oh, no, no, no. He said, you don't get it. It's kind of like Disneyland. <laughs> He said, Disneyland, oh, 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 well, sing it, sing it. So they stood up and sang, the Oak Ridge Boys, they sang Beulah Land to that beautiful group. Well, as they were leaving, he said he, they ran to the bus, and he said a lot of the precious people were coming out, and one particular little grandma, little, by, oh, by the way, did you know grandmas over in Russia are called babushka? That's where Babushka got her name, but they're called Babushkas. So a little Babushka with a little white hair was running out to the bus, had a notepad in her hand, and the guards saw her and started beating her and trying to grab her. And she just broke through from those red guards, and she ran and threw a note over in the bus window, and it hit Dwayne's lap. And he opened this note, and this, as he looked out the window and the bus was leaving, the red guards were beating this little grandma to the ground for what she had done. And it said, thank you for singing about my Jesus. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Woo! Those precious ones. Some of those precious ones. You go into the hotel. I know the first time we went. And the little lady that cleaned our room, she, you know, they, they don't speak, but you have to talk in sign language to them. And she says, you know, why are you 
here in Russia. She let me know, what are you? Come fly over to Russia. And I just boldly said, I said, Jesus, cross my heart. I said, Jesus, with a cross, and pointed up. She went, Jesus, oh, she knew Jesus. Big tears welled up in her. Oh, Jesus. And she hugged me and hugged me and hugged me and hugged me. There, there is still an underground. You can't step him out. You can't do it. It's the Spirit of God that's still there. And he's wonderful. And what a joy to go back now and for a while openly sing about Jesus. By the way, everything we do, Terry, is going to be on Russian television that goes from coast to coast. How many people? 280 million people. The whole Soviet, former Soviet Union, now the land of Russia, will be able to see on TV One the great service that we will conduct in Moscow. We'll, of course, tape it and bring you a good report back as we do every year. But please, how many will sincerely pray for us as we go that God's Holy Spirit will go before us and give us another great harvest of souls. Yes, as the old song says, God has always had a people right under the noses of the Red Guards in what was Soviet Russia. There were people who loved and served God and didn't buy that lie of atheism in Jesus' name. Well, what are we drinking here tonight? Some new wine or what? <laughs> it's good old H2O water. All right, Terry, one more song. Let's let this one be. Or you got a little story you're going to tell before you play? But this next song, I want to hear it again in Russia Glory. as hundreds stream down aisles to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Just as I am will be our invitation song. But give us a little word.
Perry McMillan. Thank you, brother. Next Thursday and next Saturday. Thursday in St. Petersburg, Saturday in Moscow. Great evangelistic crusades will be held, and I know that I'll have many of my wonderful partners back here at home interceding in prayer, believing God for a great harvest of souls. Honey, come here a minute, and let me just give you one little praise report. I don't think you got all of this. It just came in this afternoon. Speaking of Russia, many of you saw our precious little Nikolai who came from Russia with that horrible tumor upon his little back. Many of you rejoiced with us the night that he was our special guest after the successful operation to remove that ugly growth from his little body. I got a fax today from Wayne Coombs of the Adams Children Fund who sponsored little Nikolai's coming for this medical treatment to the United States. Trinity Broadcasting was honored to be able to guarantee his repatriation if it were necessary to Russia. However, it has since been determined that little Nikolai is going to become an American citizen. He is going to stay in America, and we're delighted to be able to report that. But here's the little note I received today, dear Paul and Jan and TB and family. Uh, little Nikolai has fully recovered from his May 20th surgery, and the doctors would now like to schedule uh, a little more surgery to correct a hernia in his little stomach. Uh, said over $30,000 has been paid so far to cover the first surgery by medical and private donations. Thank the Lord. Incidentally, UCLA uh, actually did the operation free of charge, and Delta Airlines flew him over free of charge. And so a lot of wonderful folks have chipped in to help this little angel. Uh, it says, however, this next round of surgery will require a payment of $5,000 before we could admit little Nikolai. Can you help? And uh, he said that the Shriners Hospital in Los Angeles has offered to provide the physical therapy, the braces for little Nikolai's legs, and speech assistance and therapy. So uh, everybody wants a little part of the reward, I think, for little Nikolai and his recuperation. We're believing that he will walk and run and play like any normal little boy. And if we'll put ourselves in agreement, we will see that happen. So I said, send the $5,000 today. We want to be a part of the continuing recovery of this little angel. And so just pray for little Nikolai. I, I don't even need any money. I know it'll be in the mail when I get there. Uh, We'll take care of this, and as soon as this next little round of surgery is over, he will be our very special guest again, and we will get to meet little Nikolai from Russia. Amen. Isn't this super? You know, the, the Tibian family is the greatest family in the world. You've stepped through the doors and joined a family that loves and cares about the whole wide world, and you're hooked. Yeah. You're part of us, okay? We love you, love having you. The other day, uh, Terry was in Dallas, and he said, by the way, he said, I'm uh, going to be playing uh, the first opening for a group called Shenandoah, a oh, yeah. country group. And he said, why don't you come and, uh, and be with us? So I thought, well, that'd be wonderful. So it was in Duncanville High School there in Texas. So we went, and when I walked in, uh, not really knowing Shenandoah, the leading singer, lead singer, walked up and went, well, Jan, what are you doing here? And it was just great. He had been watching TBN, a beautiful Christian, wonderful young man, and has a group that has had wonderful hits in the country world for years and years. And it was just a joy to meet Marty Rabin. He's the lead singer for the group, Shannon Doy. Marty began singing in talent contests and school assemblies when he was in elementary school. In his teenage years, he, his father, and his two brothers teamed up in a bluegrass band called the American Bluegrass Express. Marty Rabin and Shannon Doy are five dedicated musicians whose remarkable alliance has not let them, has owned, well, I can't read this has been forged by the fire of hard times and the steel of adversity. Why, that's cute. That's very that's poetic. Also, I wonder if Marty wrote that. Ground.
bonded in a common philosophy, deep bonds of faith and friendship. That's great. Yes. And we want all of you in the TBN family to now welcome Marty Rabin from Nashville, Tennessee. With Wednesday night prayer meeting. I'd straighten the pews on the hardwood floor. Daddy shook every hand as they gathered in. We were prayer warriors in a world of sin. We sang, they ain't no grave gonna hold me down. Then sister started clapping, then somebody shouted. The spirit would rise and fill the house as the walls came tumbling down. Oh, the walls came a tumbling down. Oh, oh, the devil took the lead at Wednesday night prayer meeting. We heard hell fire preaching. At Wednesday night prayer meeting, whoa, whoa. amazing grace fell like a flood, and we all got washed in the blood, and that's the way it was. At Wednesday night prayer meeting, I'll tell the truth. Marty Rabin. God bless you, brother. As I've said so many times, where have you been all of our lives? Mercy. Well, I, I've been down in Alabama for the last little while, and of course, uh, which I, I don't get a chance to stay there very much doing what we do for a living. We, uh, We'd never know from your accent. <laughs> <laughs> we live in Muscle Shoals. Well, actually, we live in Colbert, Colbert Heights. Do you, know where, uh, do you know where New Brockton, Alabama is? Uh, I, I've heard of it. I, I don't know exactly where it's at. It's near Op. Yeah, well, down, around, down around Elba. And, uh, she discovered America in New Brockton, Alabama. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like uh, some of those Wednesday night prayer meetings I used to go to as I was a boy. I, I like, where'd that song come from? That's a great one. You know, that tune was wrote by uh, our keyboard player, uh, his cousin, and a good friend of ours, Billy Maddox. And of course, Stan's, Stan Thorne is our keyboard player in the group, Shenandoah. And his cousin, Paul Thorne, and Billy Maddox wrote the tune. And 
Uh, we put that on the, uh, the Shenandoah's Long Time Coming album. We, we've got a new album out now, but uh, the Long Time Coming's the album that that's on. Oh, I tell you, man, it's a great song. The first time we'd ever heard it, you know, the, the Lord had really been, been moving in my life, you know, a great deal. And, you know, it's, well, for anybody that don't know the Lord, they, you know, they don't understand how amazing, it, you know, that it is the way he moves in your life and, and the things that, that takes place in your life as it kind of just kind of falls into place, you know, as it comes. And this, this particular tune here was, uh, was pitched to us, and they'd, they'd brought it to the producer that we had at that time, Robert Byrne, and, and uh, he said, I, I got this tune. He said, you know, the, the, he said, I don't, I, I don't want us to do it like the demo, but we're going to have to work on it. Uh, but he said, it's a tune. He said, man, I just love it. I said, well, what is it? He said, it's a tune called Wednesday Night Prayer Meeting. And I, I said, well, well, what's it sound like? And he said, well, let me play it for you. And he, and he did. And, and uh, I was tickled to death because I thought, man, look, I, I, I assure you, we'll, we'll work on this one. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, Just in a word or two, how did Marty come to know the Lord Jesus? Well, I tell you, I'd, I'd uh, you know, had, had been desperately seeking the Lord. I, I needed something to change in my life awfully bad. I'd, you know, uh, of course, being out in the world. I'm not saying being in country music, but certainly being out in the world. You know, I, you know, uh, I started drinking, and, you know, before you know it, fun becomes habit. And uh, before you know it, old Satan had done got his clutches on me, and I, I kind of got to liking that stuff too good. And, and uh, I, I just, you know, I, I realized, you know, a long, long time ago. See, I, when I was younger, I'd, I, I had gotten saved. Well, I, I said I was saved. Mm -hmm. See, I didn't have no relationship with Jesus. I, I, I never knew what that was all about. I never had a personal commitment with, with Jesus Christ, my Savior. I just told everybody that I did because, I, you know, I, I went through the... You know, yeah, you know, and well, I, I, well, I went through the, you know, the saying of it and announcing it. You know, everybody, you say, yeah, I'm saved, but you know, I, I didn't feel it in my heart. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, I, uh, had like say, you know, from from drinking and stuff like that, I kind of got away from God a pretty good ways and and away from Jesus, and and He kept pulling at me. He, you know, he, <laughs> you know, He kept wearing me out. I mean, I, and, and I'll be honest with you, I run from Him just as hard as I can run. Oh, sure. I sure did. I mean, I was trying to get away from him, you know, just every way in the world I could. And Satan was helping me. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the only time he's ever done anything that I like here lately. <laughs> Any witnesses out there? <laughs> but anyway, he did. And, and uh, boy, he was pulling on me real bad. And, and uh, I, I just got to the point where, man, I, I just knew that, that uh, well, I'll be honest with you, it, it got to where I couldn't lay down and go to sleep at night. I, I was afraid I was going to, you know, go to hell. I mean, I, I actually, you know, really believe that in my spirit. And I Surely this, must have been a little grandma or a mama or an aunt or an uncle. Oh, I'll tell you, my mother, uh, which she's, she's got lung cancer, and I, I'd, I'd wish for everybody, all the prayer warriors out there to pray for her. Her name is Carolyn, and, and, uh, and she's, she's in, in great hands, I'll say that, but in her physical body, she's in rough shape. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, ask that y'all... Just bring the Lord on her. I, I know that she's got the comforter with her. Her name's Carolyn. Uh huh. So, uh, but anyway, you know that that they had found out mother had cancer at that time, and and uh, uh, right around the time when I when I'd gotten saved. And I tell you, I, I'll be honest with you, if it if it wasn't for me getting saved and really getting to know Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, this would be an awfully rough time for me right now. Amen. Amen. You know, it it really would because before then, when when she had been sick before, you know, it, it really bothered me a lot, and it. It stayed on my mind, you know, quite a bit to the point that uh, it, it was hard for me to, you know, to, to keep straight what I, what I needed to keep straight because my mind was on her so much and, and uh, toiling with that. But it was mom's prayers, I bet you, that oh, really I it was. brought you, you know, through. I, I, you know, and, and, and I'll even say this. I, you, know, uh, you know, the Lord lets things happen to people for a reason. It's not for us to question them. You know, it's just for us to see what good we can get out of them because there's good in them. You know, we just got to find the, you know, the good in them. And, uh, you know, what Mother's going through uh, may be the thing that, that Jesus Christ wanted to show, uh, not just my family, you know, but uh, other people too, you know. And, you know, I, I certainly believe that with my, with my whole spirit. I suppose that's possible. But on the other hand, a lot of this stuff is just a plain, flat, old out attack of the devil, and we take authority over it and bind it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Well, anyhow, we'll pray for Mom, and we're glad that her prayers brought this young man, young man in, are we not?
And you know what? I'll tell you another thing too, uh, fella. Y'all probably never heard of this fella before, but he lives in San Antonio, and he's boy, he's, he's one of the most anointed men of God. I know his name's John Hagee. <laughs> <laughs> Do we know John Hagee? Well, my mother, my mother kept telling me. She said, Marty, you know he he comes on TBN that. You, you need to watch him, you know, and she'd say that. And I said, well, Mother, I'm going to get it. Well, I, I get tapes from him, too. Let me send you some tapes. Yeah. <laughs> I said, well, I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll watch him, Mother. I, you know, I, I, I'll watch. <laughs> it's kind of like, I'll go to Sunday school, Mom. I'll go to Sunday school. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, uh, I'd got to listen to John Hagg, and, and boy, you know, the, through him and and through some, some great people, my pastor, Brother Penn, at, at the church that I attend, and Brother Steve Richardson, I mean, we, we've got some great, I, I go to church with some great saints of God that, I mean, that just absolutely love Jesus, and, mm -hmm. and uh, some great people that fellowship with us, and, and uh, along with them tapes that, that I eventually got, not from my mother, as a matter of fact, when I come to know Jesus Christ, I, I wanted to do everything I could to, uh, to get, it, get as much in on the Word as I possibly could, because I thought, well, shucks, I... You know, I've got about, you know, 30 years of, of manifesting what I need to know and stuff like that. You know, Jesus did it in 30 years. Mm -hmm. In fact, our pastor was talking about that last night at church. And, and uh, you know, I tried to, you know, get as much, you know, uh, cram as much like, like a cram, like, like you'd cram for a test. I tried to get as much of that in as I possibly could. And, and listening to John Hagin, some other anointed men of God, has, has really helped me out quite a bit. And I, I, I'll gladly tell you tonight. Now, he's going to get me after I leave here, and he might even get me right as soon as I say it. But, you know, like I say, I, I've got the power to bind him, but I, I'm fighting Satan with both hands, and I'm enjoying it. Good. Good. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. You know what? We may just have to take Shenandoah to Russia with us sometime because they also do Beulah Land. So, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, I... Uh, I wanted to do that tonight. I, I, I think it's one of the most, and I, I know before we come on, you, you said it was yours too. I, I think this is one of the most beautifulest songs that ever was, you know. I mean, there's some beautiful ones out there, but this one ministers to me more than anything. And, it, you know, just like what I was talking about my mother a while ago, uh, you know, look, I, I know one day that, that she's going to be up there. She's going to dwell in Beulah Land. Amen. And I'm going to be up there with her too. But more it? than anything, we're going to be up there with Jesus. Amen. You going to do it for me tonight? Yes, sir. I'll do it for you. All right. In fact, uh, I, I've done asked Terry McMillan if he if he'd get his harp out, and hey. he's going to blow going to blow harp on it with me. Totally unrehearsed for the first time, right here on Trinity Broadcasting. Right. Hey, look at Marty Rayburn. Terry can do it. And brother. Terry McMillan. Do it. Need to make sure this guitar is on. Can y'all hear? I knew I should have uh, got me another down at Seared and Roebuck. <laughs> I'm kind of homesick for a country where I live. Shall be eternal 
on this one, Terry. I don't know where all it's going, but it's going somewhere, eh? Hey, let it rip. Hey, for all right for Jesus. So, so there ain't a better high than the most high, is there? One morning in Jerusalem about the break of dawn A great trial was in session They tried the blessed Lord They scorned him and they mocked him They made him carry the cross On top of Calvary Mount They crucified my Lord Oh, the cross From the cross Forgive the blessed Father He died upon the cross Oh The Son of God was dying to save the world from law. It earthquakes of Jerusalem as it walked into town. The multitudes was frightened. God's wrath came pouring down. He looked upon St. Peter with eyes of perfect love. St. Peter's heart was broken. He prayed to God above. Oh, the cry from the cross. Forgive the blessed Father. He died upon the cross. Oh, the cry from the cross. The Son of God was dying. To save the world from law Oh, the cry from the cross Forgive the blessed Father He died upon the cross Oh, the cry from the cross The Son of God was dying To save the world from law Marty Raven and Shenandoah, next time bring the whole gang, okay? God bless you. Jan, honey, bring one of our sweethearts of all time at the Trinity Broadcasting Network out here. Also one of your, well, I guess not native. I think she originally hails from Straight Creek, Kentucky. But right now, right out in Franklin, Tennessee, a suburb of Nashville up on Melody Mountain, our little sweetheart, Betty Jean Robinson is here tonight, and she's going to come on down from Melody Mountain and bless us right now if we can ever get her through the curtains over here. <laughs> oh, come on. Give a hometown girl a big old Nashville welcome tonight. How you doing, Betty? Great. Doing great, Paul. You know, uh, well, let me ask, first of all, how many go up on Melody Mountain every once in a while with Betty Jean and get to sit by the rocker up there and just sing and share and praise the Lord and sing some of the sweet old songs that we have come to love so very much. You know, we love to come to Nashville because it just oozes with talent. I mean, where in the world could you get a picker and a harmonica player, not even rehearse, and come out with something that ought to have been put down on a record? You know, I mean, it was just that good. But we don't talk much about it, but our sweet little Betty Jean... She had her turn with some pretty big stuff, according to what the world's estimation would be. Let's see, what was that big one? Hello, Love? Another lady and I wrote a song called Hello, Love that Hello, Hank love. Snow did. Yeah, yes. we remember that one. And you were the uh, songwriter how many more? What are well, some of the uh, other big Connie ones? Connie Smith was the uh, first song that I had written in country music. was number four in the nation by Connie. And it was... And, uh, you want me to tell you the title? Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, I said, baby's back again. <laughs> Why, sure. I but am. Jesus is here now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're talking about the old days yes. now. You know, yes, I, we're talking I know. about the old days. <laughs> um, and um, uh, I was successful, I guess, Paul, as a songwriter. Um, uh, my desire, and I was I was backslider. I was away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I've been backslider for years. And my desire at that time in my life, just seeking the approval because of the emptiness and loneliness in my life and, and the dis mistakes and things and things that had happened being a backslider. And you know, as I've said so many times, only Jesus can satisfy the soul. 
But I tried as a backslider just to fill it up with lonely songs. And, and um, so I was successful. I wanted to be a number one country songwriter at that time. Well, <laughs> and were. so it happened, you know, by Billboard magazine. They voted us the songwriter of the year that year. But that year, Jesus dealt with my heart and called me back to do what he wanted me to do. And that's sing the songs that I sing on up on Melody Mountain and on TBN. We're kind of <laughs> so, glad, aren't we? I'm so glad, too. <laughs> Well, when Betty and I get together, we either have to talk about recipes or grandbabies. So which one you want us to talk about? Recipes neither, neither or grandbabies? Well, <laughs> we have to talk about one grandbaby story, one of the right. cutest in the whole wide world, is Little Sunday. Tell the one about coming home from church one Sunday after you'd sang your song in church. Paul always liked this, and oh, yeah. Sunday's grown up now, uh, and uh, she's 15 years old. But when she was just a little thing about... Um, or two or three years old. She had just begun to try to sing. And she's always just killed my songs. She's, <laughs> she's never, you know, when she was little, she'd sing them wrong. But one day, uh, she was coming home from church and standing in the back seat of her mom and dad's car. And Becky said, Mom, you will not believe what Sunday was singing, what she did to your song. You know, the first gospel song I wrote was on the way home. Uh, preacher, talk about it. Sing it in your song. It's time to get started on the way home. But she was singing, on the way home, on the way home, talk about your preacher on the way home. <laughs> Out of the mouth of babes. That's been Paul's favorite story. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and then the one where she got the words mixed up says, the devil danced around in glee. You know, when he thought he had Jesus and a Sunday sang. Yes, uh, the song that I wrote, Jesus is Alive and Well. <laughs> when they nailed my Jesus to that old cross, it, it's supposed to be the devil danced around with glee, but Sunday would sing, when they nailed Jesus to the cross, the devil danced around in glue. <laughs> so... <laughs> Good. Better. <laughs> That's better. Yeah. Better yeah. words. <laughs> well, what are you singing for us tonight? Oh, I'm sweetheart. singing a touch of heaven in my soul. Ooh, when I feel a touch of heaven. Oh, come on. All right. Come on. Running through the soul of mine. of heaven running through the soul of mine I know that I Touch of heaven in my soul. 
you could have fame and fortune, all the wealth you could obtain. Listen, children, yet you have not Christ within. Death shall call you Riches cannot help you then Oh, come to Jesus For only He can satisfy Only Jesus He satisfies Sweet little Betty Jean Robinson. Don't we love her? Come on, give her a great big God bless you. Thank you for ministering. Lord, how many years now, Betty Jean? 15, 16. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you, God. Thank you. God bless you. It's so good to be home. So good to have Jan and Paul and TB in here. And I'm so glad that I'm a little part of it. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah to his name. Betty Jean Robinson. Lord, how we do love her. And I might just say that her long-running program on the Trinity Broadcasting Network up on Melody Mountain is seen every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Pacific time. That would be, what, 8 p.m. here in Nashville, 9 p.m. down in uh, Miami and up in New York. And then I think it repletes again uh, real early in the morning, 2.30 a.m. for some of the night folks. Incidentally, did you know that some of these programs that we rerun in the late night, middle of the night hours, they turn out to be some of the most fruitful hours of spiritual ministry in the entire day. We really get more salvations in that late night hour because that's when many of the other TV stations have signed off the air. That's when some of the people are up, they're troubled, they can't sleep, they switch on and there's little Betty Jane singing, Jesus can satisfy the soul. And how many have phoned in to receive him? as that little angel has led us in prayer and praise, lo, these many years. I might say also, and I think Betty Jean knows this, that she seems for some reason to draw more mail from uh, men and women in prison than just about any other program on the Trinity Broadcasting Network. She has somehow a special touch and a special voice to those who are incarcerated in prison. And I have a feeling I got an amen out there from some of the guys in uh, the many prisons that we put the satellite dishes in so that they can receive 24-hour Christian television. Well, will y'all help me with a good offering tonight? 
Don't shout me down. <laughs> now I see Brother Bagwell up there, Millersville Assembly of God. Are you all here tonight from Millersville? Pastor's here. I don't know if any of the folks came or not, but he promised he's going to bring a, a gang in here tonight. He was a great blessing to us last night, and many of you are here tonight. You know, Jan had a good idea. Come here and help me, honey. After we take care of the light bill and the, the rent and a few things that we must do, how about just saying that the rest of the offering will go to? Well, when you see 20,000 people getting food in Russia and Bibles, it is an incredible sight to see. And everyone that comes to our rally, they have a little package with them. And in that package is food and a Bible in Russian. So I love to help with that. And I thought after the expenses, which have grown tremendously here, that we could just put it toward the Bibles in Russia. Yes, we did get a little surprise here when we, we thought that the rent was going to be X amount. And uh, when we got here, they said, oh, you want lights. <laughs> And, uh, oh, you want a set, and uh, you want a crew, and you want to bring in TV cam? Oh, click, 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 up goes the uh, cash register. So we do need a little extra help tonight, and if you enjoy us rolling the old Holy Beamer into Nashville every once in a while, and you'll help us with a little diesel fuel for the Holy Beamer and a retread or two, we'll come back again and again and again and bring these great live Praise the Lord programs to you. You folks watching by television out there tonight, if you enjoy seeing the old Holy Beamer roll into Nashville and Branson and Atlanta and all of the wonderful places that it goes, uh, maybe someday to Alaska, who knows? Uh, we need your help tonight. So ushers, if you'll come quickly and we will receive our offering tonight, let's ask the Holy Spirit to just bless us as we give. So get ready to receive our offering. Father, bless our precious partners, those who have borne the burden and the heat of the day and who've made this great network. Under your blessing and help, O oh Lord, the great voice that it is around the world. Lord, bless us now as we give, meet every need from those who give, we pray tonight. Bless them and prosper them abundantly according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the church said, Amen. Amen. Would you introduce our little Dee Dee? One night I was getting dressed to go on a trip where we had to go, and I was packing in Texas. And I had Channel 58 on in Texas. It's all I listen to when I'm there. And about 12 or 1 in the morning comes the local praise program rerun. And so I was just packing around, and all of a sudden, they introduced someone called Dee Dee Chadwell. Well, I don't know her. And so I left it on, and all of a sudden, I heard this voice that in the other end of the house, I was getting goosebumps on my arms. I ran in there to watch you sing, Dee Dee, and honestly stayed up until the local praise program went off about three in the morning just to hear her sing all these beautiful songs. We got in touch with her and had her on. I didn't know she was just a baby. She's just 21 years old, but she is married, wonderful, sweet husband, and just a baby, but has the most beautiful voice. God blessed you with it, Dee. Thank you so much. I Thank appreciate you. it. You're going to sing my favorite. My favorite. Her mom's favorite and my favorite is to listen to this voice ring out. Thanks to the Lord, Dee Dee Chadwell. Sing it.
of our Texas girls, the big Tennessee. We love you. <laughs> Speaking of Texas, Jan, honey, this is the program director, by the way, for Trinity Broadcasting Network, and I understand on Saturday, September 4th, there's going to be, as we say in Missouri, my home state, big doings. Texas barbecue. Again, yes, at the IPC out at the park. It's going to be wonderful. Terry McMillan's going to be there, Mike Perky, and all of the singers that TBN loves. Plus Sheila Walsh and some of the youth singers, Dallas Home. And it's just going to be a wonderful day of barbecue, chicken, and uh, ice cream, and concert all day. But the whole week before that is going to be what? Live Praise the Lord programs in the International Production Center in Irving, Texas, right there at the crossroads of 183 and Beltline. Well, Beltline South, if you're coming that away out of the airport. Okay, anyway, it's right next to big, beautiful Calvary Temple. Uh, assembly, Pastor J. Don George's great church there, the big, beautiful, tall steeple. You can't miss it. And uh, y'all come, as we say in the South. And we hope some of you will maybe take your vacations and come down to uh, the great Metroplex, Dallas, Fort Worth, Irving area. And then, of course, not only will that be great live programming all that week in the International Production Center, if we need to, We'll move over into Pastor Don George's great church, so there's going to be room for everybody to be seated. And then, of course, dinner on the grounds on Saturday. And uh, I will still be over in Russia and perhaps down in Italy and Greece. We need to still keep praying for Greece. I'm going to go have to see some lawyers down in Greece to see about keeping those stations on the air. The battles do grow intense at times. And I know you're praying for me. And I can't tell you what it was, but we just had a fantastic victory today. Mm. Someday I'll get to tell you all about it. And it'll be another chapter to my book. Yes, I'll write an addendum if I have to. But we had a glorious breakthrough and release today for your Trinity Broadcasting Network. Just take it by faith and thank the Lord for it, and someday I'll get to tell you all about it. Anyhow, you'll be there for that great Saturday, won't you, to welcome everybody and have a great concert. I understand Matt and Lori will be hosting some that week, and well, it'll be kind of dedicated in some ways to the youth. We have Matt and Lori come because they bring Kaylin and Cody. Yes. So <laughs> we put up with Matt because we get to see Kaylin. <laughs> That's that. quite a confession. I know, but it's true. <laughs> we'll see you all in Texas. <clears throat>
on the 4th of September for a great, great day. It is youth emphasis, and the reason is just back to school. You know, kids are just fixing to go back to school, so we thought we'll do a lot of, show them a lot of witnessing and a lot of youth testimonies and get them armed to go back to school. Good idea. All right. I want to introduce another wonderful group that I had the joy of meeting tonight. I get to meet lots of wonderful new folks every time we come to Nashville, it seems. And uh, there is a group known as The Days, D-A-Y-S, from a little town called Adel, Georgia. That's your home state, dear. Do you know where Adel is? She must not. The Days are Christian country singers and songwriters. They were formed in 1989 by Chuck and Greg Day. They both had traveled with her mom and dad as children with the Accords. I do remember mom and dad and that great group, a noted Southern Gospel Quartet. But they felt a need to do a lot more than just an occasional Sunday service. So they've dedicated their lives to the Lord Jesus. They give their testimonies in concerts, churches, and many places across America. They have seen alcoholics, drug, ad drug addicts, and others delivered through the saving power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I say God bless any group that's out there and puts their heart into real ministry for the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's welcome them to the Polk Theater here in Nashville, Tennessee on this great Praise the Lord program, The Days. Since I was a young boy, I've loved that country music Ever since then, I've been coming back for more Oh, the sound of those twin fiddles and a pedal steel guitar Just send my boots a scooting across the floor Hey, but lately I've changed partners and I've changed my way of living And my country's got a brand new attitude so instead of Texas swing, I found a brand new thing And dancing for the Lord is what I choose I stopped doing a two-step, started doing a new step I'm dancing hand in hand with the Lord He's the best I've found yet, I've got my mindset On staying with the Lord and doing a new step how many's doing that new step tonight, huh? Before I change my way of living, I look forward to the weekend. All week long at work, I dream of where I'd go. My old pickup And I'd head out for the dance floor How it thrilled my heart To hear that do si -do. But now when I put on my Wranglers And I get out my old Stetson I'm headed for the other side of town Where there's always smiling faces And a new song that we sing And it hasn't lost that good old country sound Started doing a new step I'm dancing hand in hand with the Lord He's the best I've found yet I've got my mindset On staying with the Lord and doing a new step Stop doing a two step Started doing a new step I'm dancing hand in hand with the Lord I've got my mindset On staying with the Lord and doing a new step On staying with the Lord and doing a new step New step Yeah! Okay, which one is Chuck and which one is Greg? This is Greg and this is Chuck, and this is my wife, Heather. your wife, Heather. And uh, I thought there was one other member of the days here that... Well, there is, but he's right out here. 
It's our drummer, Terry Hagan. All right. All right. <laughs> Hello, Terry. How you doing, brother? I do remember your folks, the Accords, and that great gospel quartet, and uh, I suppose you kids kind of what? Cut your teeth on the bus and... and raised on a bus, I guess you could say. <laughs> and now you're traveling what? Full-time in the work of the Lord? Have song, will travel, as we say? Yes, sir. We're uh, uh, on the road full-time, and uh, of course, uh, the Lord gives us all the songs that we sing, and... Um, just been real good to us, and things are really picking up. We've seen a lot of souls saved in the past year, about 250 to be exact. The Lord's been mighty good to us. Give us, give us a little testimony, a little report, and then move on. Well, Brother Paul, I tell you, the Lord has been good to us. Uh, the days have been called into a special ministry. We're, uh, I guess what you'd call minis- missionaries to the United States. A lot of people go overseas, and uh, in some places you can sing in English, but a lot of times it's hard to go and sing uh, in countries and they don't understand you. So uh, we feel like the Lord has called us to go out into the highways and the byways. This year, uh, we're going to be going out into the Walmart parking lots and the Kmart parking lots <laughs> across the United States. Praise the Lord. And we're going to be setting up on flatbed trailers wherever they'll let us, if it's in truck stops or if it's in grocery store uh, parking lots. We're going to go out and we're going to set up and sing and testify about how the Lord has saved us how he delivered us from drugs and alcohol, brought us out of the nightclubs and the bars, gave us a new song. Amen. And we're looking forward to just seeing what else the Lord is going to do. Praise God. For those of you that might want to get in touch with the days, we'll try to get a little address and a number up for you because I have a feeling some of them want to get in touch with you. God bless you. This one is called, Here Comes the Cavalry. Or the Calvary. Little Johnny sat right up there on the front row His eyes wide as he watched the silver screen His heart sank as his hero was surrounded By those bad guys in the black hats looking mean Just when it looked like everything was hopeless And surely now the battle would be lost Little Johnny heard the blasting of the trumpet As the cavalry charged and ran the bad guys off Well, here comes the cavalry Riding to the rescue Ready for a fight to defeat the enemy Here comes the cavalry Just in time to save the day Oh, he never gave up hope Cause he knew they'd made the way As he grew up, Johnny still believed in heroes. Well, he became one to three children of his own. All through the years, he taught them to remember that Jesus wouldn't leave them all alone. Now, he said, the Lord, well, he's just like the Calvary. And you can count on him through the thick and thin. But even though the devil may have you surrounded You can call his name and he'll come riding in Just like the Calvary Riding to the rescue Ready for a fight to defeat the enemy Here comes the Calvary Just in time to save the day Don't you ever give up hope Cause the Lord will make the way Here comes a cow, just in time to save the day. Don't you ever give up hope, cause the Lord will make the way. Yeah. glad the Lord's your Calvary tonight. Give him a hand clap of praise. I've got an offer for you, my friend. 
This offer may not be repeated again It's a plan that was made many years ago At a hill called Mount Calvary On an old rugged cross This plan is so simple A child could understand Yet it's freely offered to every woman and man A chance of a lifetime with a guarantee If you call on him now, he'll give you life eternally The offer still stands He's waiting for He's holding out his hands with salvation's plan. The offer still stands. The offer still stands. He's waiting for you. He's holding out his hands with salvation's plan. The offer still stands There's no 800 number That you'll ever need You can always find him Right down on your knees Just trust in the Savior And take hold of his hand Then ask him to save you while you still can The offer still stands Yes, it does. He's waiting for you He's holding out his hands With salvation's plan The offer still stands The offer still stands He's waiting for you He's holding out his hands With salvation's plan The offer still stands Yes, he's holding out his hands With salvation's plan the offer still stands The offer still stands Today's God bless you young folks and give you many souls as you hit the highways and byways and streets. Isn't that a great idea to go into parking lots of, you know, the stores and the places where the people are? I think that's wonderful and I salute you for that and pray God's blessing upon you and that you'll reach, you know what, these young people will reach a multitude of people that we won't even reach through Christian television or Christian radio, right out there in the marketplace. You know, if Jesus were here in his physical body on earth today, I think he'd be out there with the days. I think part of the time he'd be here on TV with us, too. <laughs> of course, he is, you know, and we love him for that, don't we? And many, many precious souls are streaming into the kingdom around the clock. I love when I go to the main prayer room there in Southern California. I always love to look at that stack of white slips that have come in in a 24-hour period. And I want you to know there is a steady stream of souls coming to know Jesus Christ through your Trinity Broadcasting Network because you have prayed, because you have loved, because you have given, because you have interceded, and you have helped us build this great voice like no other voice in the history of the world. 
nearly 360 now television stations linked together by this great satellite. Oh, God knew we'd need some big tools of communication to reach this last generation before Jesus came. And he's given it to us. And bless God, together we are using it in Jesus' name. Well, honey, come here and help me introduce one of the sweetest ladies in the whole wide world. We've saved some of the best wine for last. And all I can say is this little Cherokee, part Cherokee Indian gal is tough. She is tough. And we'll get a little account from her in a second or two as to what she's been up to. I have a feeling she's been in the angel room. I have a feeling a new song or two has come. And I believe that that healing is progressing. And uh, our sweet little Dottie Rambo has been through the valley also. And we have, how many of you been praying for our little sweet angel, Dottie Rambo? And she has gone through a deep, deep valley, but the Lord has brought her through. I think it's time to just say howdy to one of the sweetest ladies in the whole wide world. T over 2,000 of the beautiful songs that we love have been penned by her. Sing us a song, and then we'll get an update. I'll hear it in a minute. For what are three reasons? We'll start again, boys. I can't hear it. Just say praise the Lord with me while we re it. Just re the track for me, guys. All right. You having a good time tonight? Oh, t last night was glorious, Father Jet. Woo! Let me tell you. Come here. Come here. <laughs> This is one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. Last night you were Catherine Coolman, all right? <laughs> you were. For what earthly reason did the heavenly Father send down his Son to suffer rejection? And pay for crimes he had not done. And for what earthly reason would the Father let him hang on that tree? I wept with the answer that one earthly reason had to be me.
me and the whole wide world. Give it to Naughty, naughty, naughty. You sweet thing. So good to see you again. Good to see you. You look better every time I see you. Well, I've had a wonderful sister in the Lord, Judy Strickland, that came with me. I had a little sit back with the flu, and she's been with me for a couple, half months ago now. And uh, this is my first day to really get out of the fever stage, and I feel so good. I'm kind of weak and I'm barefoot, as you can see. But that's all right. I just bounced back, you know me. But she put six pounds on me, some of that ice cream, you know. I'm going to stop that you mess, I'm telling you about that. Well, you keep, you got a ways to go. You just keep that up. Listen, that, that beautiful song, I always love to ask, and I think Dottie's grown to expect this question. That one earthly reason, there's always a little story, isn't there, behind every one of these beautiful songs. Uh, could I do something before I do that? Uh, could I have, uh, excuse, me, excuse me, Bill and Renee Morris yes. to come on out and get set up, because they're going to be helping you. Oh, Would we you know Bill welcome and Welcome Bill and Renee Morris. This they're is so an extra precious. blessing. Didn't know you were all coming they're tonight. They're wonderful. Don't you love them? Oh, you didn't know either. <laughs> no, they're my buddies. <laughs> we're going to set up over here, and we're going to do some guitar picking, okay? And Grand Dot okay. has got something planned here that we didn't know about tonight. I know. That's, That's good. I love, these are my kids over here, and, and I know they're always welcome here, and so oh, I'll call to make sure, and so they, they know about everything I've ever written, I think, even some I didn't write, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> they blame me for it. But for, <laughs> for what earthly reason? That's an old slogan. You know, we've all oh, heard yeah. for years. Southern, you know, Southern old, Southern. you know, you know, mm -hmm. you were Southern, all of us. But Mama would say, for what earthly reason you go out there and mess up your tennis shoes? You know, you don't want to have one pair, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for what earthly reason you do that for? Mm -hmm. And one day, I, I love those little cliches and things. I was sitting in my angel room, and I, I got to look at, at the body, and I was thinking how frail it is anyway, and how little time we really have here if we live our allotted 120 years. Not very long, because we're moving so quickly. And I was thinking about how you wake up one day and your fingers hurt, they didn't hurt yesterday, and things move on, change. Mm -hmm. But uh, I looked at the body and I realized it was made from dust. It goes back to dust. I said, God, for what earthly reason? <laughs> <laughs> for what earthly reason would you ever use somebody like me? <laughs> And I said, earthly, that's what I am, earthly. And he knew that feeling of being earthly, yeah. being part man, part God, as Jan so beautifully talked about last night. And I cried, I cried, cried. It was what, I, that's preaching. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where that song came from. And I said, God, how do I start it? And he sort of said, why don't you start it? We're supposed to start it for what earthly reason? So that's where I started. <laughs> but when I got to the second verse, I teach how to write songs if you have an inborn gift. I have tapes on that that I sell. But I always say, if you're going to start, start negative and end positive. Yeah. So okay. the second verse says, The fairest of angels were not summoned from the throne up in the sky. You see, to pardon our, our sins and all our transgressions, not even the holy angels could die. Our only provision was destined to be that sweet lamb of glory. Oh. And his only reason was me. <laughs> what are the reasons? That's what it's about. Now, what do you want me to sing? I, I want no you more. to sing whatever you want to sing tonight. All right, I'm going you to You get right to there. sing your favorites. I always twist her arm backstage <laughs> and say, now, Dottie, Please sing, you know, and I give all of my favorites. I but tonight, mean, you do your favorites. Well, I always like to, you know, do what people want me to do, especially if they pay me, you know. Since we don't pay, you don't get to you do pay. what you want to do. I yes. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The greatest pay in the world is seeing this television, TV, and going all over the world. Yes. Lord. That's oh. the good pay. Woo! Russia. I heard about that. I wanted to go to Russia with you so bad. I wanted to go if I could make it. Could I get on the plane and go with you? No. Please. Have you got a passport? Yes, I do. You got a visa. I got a visa. A Credit visa? cards, driver's license, everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's I'm go. But that's let's the greatest go. pay hey, in the world. We'll, Listen, we'll I'm, I'm we'll talk. I don't fool around with talking like this now. I'm in business. I know you don't, but now I'll have to talk to the travel agent and see if there's, you know, I know. room this, to this get him. Paul, how long will we stay in? Eight days. Well, that's wonderful. I want to ask you, you said... <laughs> I believe the woman's serious. 
I am. Serious as a heart attack on Sunday. Uh, what? What? Yes, it is very serious. Uh, what I was going to say, though, uh, I'd wanted to go a long time, and, and Terry McMillan and I were talking backstage, but I heard you last night, and I want you to quote them again. While I'm taking my place to get set up, I want you once more tell me and these folks where TBN is reaching into, because I just shook the bed when you told me. Would you do that while I take my place? You mean the foreign countries and places? Yes. Dear Lord, have mercy. I used to be able to call every station and every call letter and every channel number, you know, by name. But uh, we started of all places out in the Caribbean islands, Neva St. Christopher, and then down to St. Lucia, now Grenada's on the air, then uh, El Salvador, then Costa Rica, then Guatemala, then, uh, then of all places, Nicaragua, communist Nicaragua, Honduras, we're waiting for a permit from Panama, now we're on in La Paz, Bolivia, uh, we're on in Buenos Aires, Argentina, we're building in Santiago, Chile, uh, dear Lord, uh, Bogota, Colombia is coming. Uh, of course, we've been on many years in uh, uh, Free China, Taiwan with uh, Nora Lam. Um, oh, then came South Africa, then came Zaire, then came Italy, then came Greece, then Russia. And Dottie, that is going to be the thrill, I suppose, of my lifetime. When we stand on Russian soil and dedicate the first Christian station in the very city, a stone's throw, where Lenin announced the successful coup and the death of the Tsar that ushered in 70 years of atheism and communism, God chose to plant the first Christian station right in the city where Mr. Lenin proclaimed communism. I think God's right on, right on. And even as you sing tonight, Dottie, and all of our gang on the big old powerful shortwave radio, they're going to be tuning you in in Australia and New Zealand and Japan and over 120 nations have checked in wondering what this strange new powerful station from Salt Lake City, Utah is. And for songs like For What Earthly Reason to crackle around the world seven and one half times in one second has to be God's miracle. You know, Paul, when I was listening last night to you, I, I was just actually shaking the bed. It was so exciting. I was just, I, I couldn't even fathom that I could live in the day that we could see this. You know, we were there with TBN with a live band. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking first days, you know. Uh, with the long dresses and everything. <laughs> and uh, God just put that special thing, that vision. It's a vision beyond visions in the heart of this couple. And of course, the engineering of it, I feel, came from Paul. And the right hand of him is little Jan that uh, pulls up some of the most spiritual things to just wet the tears down your face and bring people to Christ and reach those little children the little dolls, the trucks, the toys. We forget how blessed we are. But I was thinking, I looked at my friend Judy when I was combing my hair and I was listening back to the rerun today and I said, Judy, or did you hear this about Russia? That's why I'm glad I'm on TV and, and that I know this couple. I'm gonna sing their favorite song, all right? Tears will never stain the streets of that city. All right, do it, darling. If I could count the tears that have fallen, it would seem like an ocean to be. And yeah, I guess if my heart was a window, all the world could look through Oh, the pain and scars you would see Sing with the kids Yeah. 
In my services, after I do about five songs, I sit down my guitar and we get into really worshiping, praising, and prophesying, and preaching, whatever. And when we get the guitar, we never know what we're going to do. You know why we do that? Because the church has gotten so slick, so polished, that we can know every program by ear. We can read every note. Now listen, I've made, we have made 77 albums and over 2,200 songs. I know how to stay on pitch and sing with a track. We all do that here. But the Holy Spirit says, Dottie, when you get your little, people call it axe, A-X-E. When you get your little axe and start playing your guitar, you know, now I can get into that because you don't know which way you're going. And that's the truth. That's when I say, angels hover around us. Holy Spirit, be among us. If you don't go, Lord, I'm not going. I will not be here without the Holy Spirit's anointing because I'm just at that little house of clay, that little earthly reason without the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And boy, it's strong in this place tonight. I don't think I have heard TBN sound better, feel more anointed than I did last night and tonight. I'm telling you. And to see my friend Terry McMillan, and I told him, keep that brace on as much as possible and take care of that neck, because I've had that one surgery. But isn't he doing great? I'm so thrilled about that. And then a while ago, we slipped out to see Vern, went to the hospital to see Vern, and he was thrilled, had prayer with him. It was so much fun. And, and he's excited about getting back in the studio with Terry McMillan and producing uh, songs, a tribute to Dottie, I guess it is. And he teased me. He said, I think this ought to be called, since Terry's been attacked, I've been attacked, he'd been attacked. He said, I think we ought to call this album Back from the Dead. I said, <laughs> I said no, I think we ought to call it The Three Miracles myself. <laughs> Okay, let's just hang in G. Is that all right? I, mean, I don't know. Wait a minute. Yeah, let's hang in G. This is becoming one of my favorite songs. And I'll just kick it off and y'all find any place you want to go. It's in a key of G okay. or hall, either one. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Too many miles behind me. Too many to gain, to lose. Hang in there, bird. Oh, too many sunsets lie behind the mountains. Too many rivers my feet have walked through. And there's too many treasures waiting over yonder. Church, there's too much to gain. Turn it around, darling. Don't you like that country sound? <laughs> I have crossed the hot burning desert. Suddenly, somewhere up ahead, I see cool, cool, clear water, and defeat is one word. The 
This little Cherokee is never for you. Everybody back here, oh, I love it. All these kids and all the great voices, the new voices, the new music, it's so good. And it seems all to be kind of, it's a melting pot anymore of the same sounds. Lyrics are becoming very important. Isn't that good? We, it has to be that way. There was a time when my music, they'd say, well, do, do you have Jesus in that song? I need a new song. Is Jesus mentioned? Is the blood mentioned? I say, well, yes. Well, if you'll just give us a little crossing over song, we'll let, let, you know, we'd love to have that. Uh, and I wrote a new song recently called, There's No Crossing Over the Cross. Hey! Just think it heaven when we get there there's so many things to do we don't have to worry about anything 
Come here, Paul, and ask the question. I love to do that. We've got time. Y'all count me down. Yes, now. ma'am. No, we've got about right. uh, 20 minutes. All right, well, all right. I'm going to ask you a question. I love to do this. Y'all can sit up. You can stand up, do anything you want to, as long as you're decent. Uh, <laughs> the Lord carried me in the spirit not long ago to the Holy Lands. Really? Yes. And uh, I was disappointed when I went there with you fellas, you know, a few years back. Because mm -hmm. in my mind, I had not been there. I didn't see telephone lines. I didn't like that. Telephone poles. I don't know what they ran on, you know. But I still was seeing it when Jesus was there, you know. I saw that. So lately, he carried me back there. And there was a person standing with one leg on the floor and the other leg propped against the telephone post. And he was in front of the carpenter shop. Mm -hmm. And crowds were bursting, just the doors open. Because they'd come to see the carpenter. And that's not the name of the song, but this person tells, he says, I know all about this man. It's right there. I watched, I watched him be born. I know, I know when he went to the temple. Just, he goes on and on and on. And then he gets real sad. I said, God, who is he? Do you know who it is? Now, this is a, a, a dream. It's, uh, it's a vision. A vision. Uh -huh. Who do you think that could be that knew everything about Jesus? One of the disciples? No. I didn't know it either. Because he became very sad. And time shall be no more. Ooh. It was time shall be no more so time was lonely because time is running out and the saints of god are getting ready to start where time will never end forever no more time no more time no more sun because he will be the light of that city Woo! hallelujah no more thirsting no more hungry no more babies with swollen stomachs. Amen. I'm telling you, heal bodies without rods in the back like man. Heal forever. Open eyes, open ears. My Lord, I can't hardly stand it. I like it down here, but I want to go there too. How about y'all? Yes. And I'm going to tell you, I would miss heaven for any man or woman or child or grandbaby in the world. Any friend I've got. I'm going to heaven. Yes. I'm going to see my Jesus. I made a covenant. A covenant with my Lord. I said, Jesus, Jesus, I'm gonna live for you, Lord. I'm gonna walk for you. I'm gonna talk for you, Lord. I'm gonna sing for you, Jesus. I'm gonna preach for you. I'm gonna teach for you. I'm gonna weep for you. I'm gonna smile for you, Lord Jesus. I made a covenant with the Lord. You see, you can't make a covenant with somebody that you don't have somebody to make a covenant with. And I made a covenant with my Lord. Well, I just wrote that one. <laughs> Is something else you want, darling? Oh, my goodness. Sing on. Sing on. The Holy Hills? Uh, it's been a long time. But I don't, will y'all really help me out if I don't know it? Okay, I just hang it. Gee, sounds good there, I think. I'm kind of getting over the croup a little bit. Okay, if I forget it, will y'all scream at me? See, when you've written over 2,300 songs, you don't know all of them. <laughs> Let's try it there. Terry, you know this is simple. One, two, three, four chords, something like that. We'll do it in G. Kick it off, baby. Good to know. The holy hills of heaven call me to mansions bright across. This house is 
them all. I think it'd be a good idea before we say good night in about 15 minutes, and we'll have time for a song or two yet, but there are just a number of people that are heavy on our hearts tonight that, that need our prayers. Vern Jackson in the hospital. Thank God he's mending and yes, he going to be all right. Thank God. Devil lost again. Yes, he did. He's going to be back flying higher than he's yes, ever flown yes, before. Yes, yes. Praise in God, Jesus' Lord, name. Dottie still continues to gain strength. You look better every time I see you. Well, I, uh, you know, I, I never tell a lie. I just uh, did a tape for my partners. It's called My Struggle and My Journey to Recovery. Last chapter of Mark talks about calling the elders of the church. They shall lay hands upon them and they shall recover. I never say I am healed because I still have pain except for in the anointing. But every day I walk in recovery. And very soon I'll stop. Yes. And I'm going to say, wow, the pain is all gone. Amen. And it's okay with me. The Lord just keeps on strengthening me. And I know that he's not through with me, Paul. Amen. 
Because there's too many people hurting and bleeding and dying and wasting away than folks that don't even know about Jesus. And I was watching some old, old films of uh, Miss Catherine Kuhlman. That's why really last night, Jan, really her voice sounded so much like that precious lady. And I hadn't seen this tape in 19 years. And I heard then when she's saying this, this revival is now, it's now. See, we have not started a revival. The revival has already begun. Amen. The church is beginning to be in its finest hour. Why do you think these folks are getting television stations where nobody else can get them all over the world? And I just want to cry with tears of joy because I know that this is the tool. I know this, that God's going to use to reach the whole world. How else could he reach the whole world, Paul? Amen. How else would no he? And I pray every day for this couple. Can you imagine? Imagine all that financial strain, flying, traveling, eating what they have to eat, doing what they have to do, and, and, and even clothes. You can't imagine what you have to have. I don't think folks realize that. And the hours, they don't get to be with their family. And I'm just telling you like it is. So if you want to have this kind of thing, look at the bottom of your screen. Call in. And even if you want to make pledges, we don't even care about that tonight. Do it tonight if you want to. That's not what we're doing. Go ahead and do it anyway. You got something in a sock under your mattress, get it out. Send the TV in <laughs> because this is the greatest, greatest station. Really, it is. And I want to be here with TBN when Jesus comes. And wherever we go up or down or sideways or backwards, I, it don't make a difference to me just so long as we're with the Lord. And I praise God for all you sitting out there and for all of you that are watching in. And there's a number at the bottom of the screen if you're hurting, if you're lost. That was what Paul was going to say. Yes. In this room tonight, I'm sure there are some of you that by the upraised hand would say, I need a healing touch from the Lord. Lift your hand if you're in this room. Some of you could be in pain. Some of you may have gotten a, a very bad doctor's report. I think uh, our little Betty Jean has been needing a touch in her body as well, and we want to lift her up. Honey, tell us about Laverne Trip. I think Edith called you today. Edith called me today, and there Terry married um, a beautiful lady, Tara, and her mother is only 45 years old and has gotten the word that she has cancer of the liver. And there is no hope. They've, they've flown her all over. And now she loves the Lord with all of her heart. And uh, they're just asking. They, she has a 14-year-old son. And Tara and Terry just are asking for our prayers. And of course, Jesus. Vern, I don't think, Dottie, you realize that Vern literally walked through the valley of the shadow of yes, death. He, he told the, me last, today, but I didn't know the last day that he had beautifully was the day that we were singing the songs that you, some of them that you just sang. Where he, one of his greatest joys was to make this tribute to Dottie Rambo. So he was that. singing his heart out, and we didn't realize he had lost four pints of blood. Oh, and I didn't know yes, that. and he was having bleeding ulcers, and he was just being a trooper and singing and singing and he singing. Is a In the middle of the night, he woke his wife up and he said, "Honey, I'm I'm bad off. We've got to go to the hospital." Jesus. We went the next morning and. We were in the emergency ward only an hour and a half when he went into complete cardiac arrest out, no vital signs. He was gone, gone. and the doctors you. rushed in and took control, and he, over a period of a week, they cauterized his ulcers that didn't work. He lost over eight pints of blood. My land. They finally operated, took out a quarter of his stomach, Jesus. and he just today is on the road to recovery yes. but you know it is so strange when we started to do this album Dottie your songs are so powerful the words we were listening to the words as we were singing Terry was attacked Vern attacked you attacked you know Satan was the music leader of yes, heaven he was. that was his job he was the chief musician Absolutely. that led the praise and worship beautiful. He was and beautiful. he fell yes. and he seems to attack yeah. the musicians yes. that write this beautiful blood songs like they have taken his place and he doesn't like it but of course we know we have 
the authority yes, and the power yes. to yes. tread on serpents yes. and nothing by, shall by any means hurt yes. us. And through prayer, we've seen Vern come literally back to life three times oh in a my. week. And so we believe that he will be recovering. In fact, yesterday, he and I tease each other about who's the oldest. And <laughs> someone, nurse or someone said to him, said, well, who is this lady that was here? The blonde lady said, is she somebody's mother? And Vern looked at the nurse and says, yeah, she's my mother. So I hit him on top of the head. So the only thing he's recovering from now is this little knot he has on top of his head. But, but he's that, doing He's a well. miracle. He, he looked great tonight. Miracle. He really did. We prayed with him. He's doing better. Let's, let's agree right now for those that are suffering, many at home, some in hospital yes, rooms even yes. now, some in prison cells, on the sick bed. Those of you that have... Marty. A healing need body right now. Just lift that hand and keep it up. Thank you, Father. And those of you around them, just lay your hands on their shoulders. As we said last night, the scripture is clear. They that believe shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Are you a believer tonight? If you're a believer, let's agree right now that the healing power and virtue of Jesus Christ will flow into every one of these yes. physical bodies. I'm going to lay hands on our little sweet Dottie, and we're going to agree that strength will continue to flow into her body. Paul, let me, but just excuse me a moment. I, we did prison movies, where, uh, ministries, excuse me, prison ministries, with uh, Mike Barber, uh, where well, you've been a lot, and we went on what they call life's row, is death row, and uh, they had a surprise for me, TV and filmed it, and the four ladies sign language, a song to me, and then I stayed and did, we shall behold him. So they're watching tonight. I love you, all of you, Carla. And there's so many, I can't remember the names. I wouldn't even start, but they're precious. And I know you've talked to Carla. God bless you. We're praying for you too. Oh, amen. Amen. One other request. Marty's mother. Marty's mother, yes. Suffering with cancer in her body, in the lungs agree father in the mighty name of Jesus we obey your word and you said that if we would but believe just believe hallelujah that you would endue us with mighty power from on high that we too could lay hands on the sick and they would recover Lord that's your word and we're just simple enough to believe it and now we do it in Jesus' name. And I say to you that are sick and afflicted and being tormented by the power of the evil one, we say unto you, rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. We come against the power of the evil one and we bind that evil power by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We take dominion and authority over all the works of the devil in Jesus' name. And we say to this precious mother, be healed in Jesus' name. To our precious Dottie, we say, gain strength in the name of Jesus. To Vern Jackson, we say, rise off of that bed of affliction in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. To little Betty Jean, we say, be every whit whole by the stripes of Jesus. To this precious mother, to Tara's sweet mother, we say to that body, be made whole by the stripes of Jesus. For we reach out as the little woman so many years ago, and we touch the hem of your garment. And we would receive into our bodies that precious virtue. For your word declares that if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwell in us, he shall also quicken or make alive our mortal bodies by that same spirit and we receive it in the name of Jesus and now we praise you for it in the name of Jesus just lift your hands and rejoice rejoice and receive from the ribbon side of Jesus the healing touch and virtue of the Lord Jesus Christ of the Lord Jesus Christ well Dottie we've got Three minutes. Can we sing a final song and say good night for <laughs> good old needed. Nashville one more time? Oh, I'll try. Okay. Okay, we'll just try. Didn't see, darling. So build my mansion next door to Jesus and tell the angels I'm coming home. Yeah. 
Bless you, darling. Have you all had a good time in old Nashville? You want us to come back someday? Oh, what a great two nights of praise the Lord we've enjoyed together. God bless you all. We love you with all our hearts. Good night from Nashville, Tennessee. We love you. And God loves you. And let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. you've been with us for Praise the Lord. If you'd like an audio cassette of Praise the Lord, please write as for program 0819-93. That's 0819-93. The tapes will be sent for your love gift to the Praise the Lord program. TBN has a worldwide ministry. We need your love gifts, large or small, to help keep the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. So write today, Praise the Lord, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Or in Canada, write TBN, P.O. Box 24215, APO, Richmond, British Columbia, V7B, 1Y2. If you haven't asked Christ in your life, call a prayer partner now and pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Now until next time, remember to praise the Lord. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.